Hi, this is Dr. Kat Fries from Central New Mexico Community College. We're continuing our discussion of the anatomy of the respiratory system. So far, we focused on the respiratory zone mostly. We're now going to discuss the anatomy of the respiratory zone, which is the zone where actual gas exchange change can begin to occur. Now, in my previous video, when I discussed the bronchial tree, I did include all of the bronchioles and even the alveoli. Bear in mind that some of those structures, particularly the alveoli and the bronchioles that we refer to as the respiratory bronchioles, they might be part of the bronchial tree, but they are actually part of our respiratory zone. So once the bronchioles are switched over to what we call respiratory bronchioles, gas exchange can begin to occur. The last bronchioles where gas exchange does not occur are called the terminal bronchioles. So once again, very important, the respiratory zone is the zone where gas exchange can occur. And that tells you that the walls of these structures I have listed here, the respiratory bronchioles, the alveolar ducts, the alveolar sacs, and then the individual alveoli, must all be thin enough to where oxygen gas, oxygen gas, carbon dioxide gases can easily diffuse back and forth. What makes up most of our lungs is actually the millions and millions of little air sacs we call alveoli singular alveolus. So singular it would be alveolus. And we see one single alveolus here. When we have a cluster of them, like almost a cluster of grapes, we see we refer to it the structure as an alveolar sac. And each alveolar sac is fed by a respiratory bronchiole. So these respiratory bronchioles again are going to have a thin enough wall across which gas exchange begins. So we start to see gas exchange occurring here in these bronchioles and the very end is the alveoli. Now <clears throat> these alveoli are small and they're all close together and we have millions of them so they provide a humongous amount of surface area for gas exchange to occur. Notice that each one of these alveolar sacs and even alveoli is going to have a cobweb of capillary beds uh, around them. We also have quite a few elastic fibers around each one of these alveoli. But the capillaries are important to mention because, of course, we need to see the gas exchange occurring between the capillaries. And here we see in the cross-section of the alveolus, cross-section of the tiny little capillaries. And the, the exchange is going to be such that oxygen will be picked up by the capillaries, like so. And the capillaries are going to get rid of their carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide in the capillaries is going to be exchanged for the oxygen. Where does the oxygen come from? That's clearly the oxygen that we bring in by inhaling atmospheric air. And by the way, that atmospheric air also has water vapor in it. So the air in or the mixture of air in the alveoli is a mixture of oxygen and carbon dioxide and water. Plus, we will also see that nitrogen is part of our atmospheric air, but not very important in making our body function. Each one of these alveoli has a pore in it that allows it to be connected to the next alveolus. So when we bring in air and it goes down our pharynx, <clears throat> down the larynx into the trachea, down the, the different bronchi bronchial levels and the different bronchiolar levels and all the way into the alveoli, that air is going to 
reach some alveoli and easily spread throughout all the alveoli in an alveolar sac, for instance, right, because of those pores. Let's take a look now at the cells that form the walls of the alveoli. We have primarily simple squamous epithelial tissue forming the wall of an alveolus, and you can see that here. You notice these are very flattened cells with flattened nuclei, right? And here we see them as well. Let me actually enlarge this image, like so. That works a little bit better. So each one of these um, is showing you, you know, you could pretend you're on the inside of your alveolus looking around you, and then you would see these puzzle pieces, which are the uh, squamous cells. But now, in addition to squamous cells, we're also going to see macrophages, and we're also going to see what we refer to as type 2 cells, illustrated here. In earlier videos, we listed several of the pr uh, protective mechanisms that our respiratory system depends on, anywhere from the cilia, goblet cells, serum mucus glands. Here we see that the macrophages in the alveoli are also going to play an important role for that last minute effort to get rid of path pathogens that made it perhaps all the way into the alveoli. But we also have the so-called type 2 cells or surfactant cells, which produce a chemical that we refer to as surfactant, and a chemical that plays a very crucial role in ensuring that our alveoli will not collapse too easily. We will talk more about the function of surface tension and surfactant in our physiology videos. So the type 1 cells by the way, are your squamous cells. Now, an important function to mention about these squamous cells, aside from being so thin that they can allow for gas exchange to, between the capillaries and the alveoli to occur very easily, their second important function is their secretory function. And right now, this particular an enzyme, angiotensin-converting enzyme, or ACE, is not big in our discussion, but when we get to the urinary system, I expect that you remember this enzyme. As a matter of fact, when we learned about blood pressure regulation, you learned about a hormone called angiotensinogen, or angio, I'm sorry, you learned about angiotensin 2, and that is very related to this particular converting enzyme, abbreviated as ACE. So plant that somewhere in the back of your mind to where you can recall it when we get to the urinary system. Let's take a look now at the very specialized respiratory membrane that allows for very efficient, effective gas exchange to occur. We use the term or terminology respiratory membrane. Don't forget this to describe the membrane that is formed by the endothelium of your capillaries. Remember that that endothelium is made up of simple squamous epithelial tissue, as well as your type 1 cells or the squamous cells of your alveolus, plus maybe a bit of basement membrane for each one of them. So those, are, those epithelial tissues and basement membranes are fused, more or less, and form what we refer to as the respiratory membrane. So any gases are going to have to cross or be able to cross that respiratory membrane, which is again made up of the alveolar simple squamous epithelial tissue as well as the simple squamous epithelial tissue of your capillaries. So near the bottom here, you once again see how the red blood cells in the capillaries are going to want to pick up the oxygen and become oxygenated, while at the same time they want to let go with the carbon dioxide. 
the carbon dioxide will go in this direction such that we can exhale that. Because this respiratory membrane is a barrier between the air that we inhale and the blood in the capillaries, we refer to the respiratory membrane as an air-blood barrier. Very important membrane for you to remember this respiratory membrane. Very important for you to think about what consequences there will be if this membrane becomes inflamed, uh, thickened, clogged up with all kinds of pathogens or mucus, um, perhaps the respiratory membrane starts to decrease in surface area for various reasons, for, because of damage to the alveoli. Start thinking about what kinds of consequences this has on how well we can exchange these gases.